Hey there, um, welcome to the first video in the Mars unit, Mars introduction video. Um, in this video I'm going to use Eyes in the Solar System, which is an awesome program put out by the Jet Propulsion Laboratory. Uh, you can use, use this program online, go to uh, just Google Eyes in the Solar System. We'll be using this program a lot in class as well. So I'm going to kind of show you where Mars is in the solar system, talk a little bit about that, and then just show you a couple of comparative pictures between a desert on Mars, a couple deserts on Mars, and Mars itself, just to show you how similar, in a lot of ways, Mars is to Earth. And then in the next video, in the future videos on this unit, I'll go into more detail about all of the amazing uh, aspects of Mars that that we found out so far since we've been studying it. So, here you see uh, the solar system, and you also see some probes, four probes here that were sent out into space uh, quite a few decades ago, and we'll be talking about those later on in class as well. But let's uh, zoom in. We'll zoom in past Neptune, the outermost planet, Uranus, there's Saturn, Jupiter. And as we get into the inner planets, uh, it's a little crowded here with with all of these uh, space probes or whatever you want to they call them in this program they call them spacecraft. So if you go to visual controls, just lift this up. Here you can select what you want to see on the screen. So let's deselect spacecraft and it looks a lot cleaner now. So that was in the visual control menu and zoom in a little farther and now we just got the four inner planets and the sun. This is as far as we can zoom and you can see this is real time and this is currently right now. Uh, you can see it's 8.18 p.m. on September 29th, 2012. Um, so this is currently where the planets are in their orbit around the sun. We're here and Mars is over here. If you speed things up a bit by sliding this down, you'll start to see the planets speed up in their orbit. And you can see Earth is getting farther from Mars right now. And as you know, we just sent Curiosity to Mars, and so it makes sense that we were closer to Mars a little bit in the past. Although now, as we're approaching October 2013, we're getting closer and closer to Mars, and eventually Right about now, April of 2014, we will be as close to Mars as we are, as we can be in that particular orbit. So that's kind of cool. Let's, let's uh, go back to real rate and go back to now. And since this is uh, video is focusing on Mars, let's go to Mars. So how do you do that in eyes in the solar system? If you just hover your mouse over the the name, it highlights the orbit, and you click once, and it brings up it changes the name to this. Click it again, click to zoom, and you, Mars comes up. Depending on your computer speed, if you're doing this on the computers at school, you know this is going to be a lot slower. Um, but it will render the surface features to a pretty good detail on Mars. You can see polar cap, another polar cap. You can see the day side and the night side and um, yeah, a lot of good features. Let's head towards putting the sun in back of Mars and you can see a cool feature that I love about this program. See right now you, you can't really, you can kind of see the atmosphere here depending on how well this video rendered but let's uh, get the sun closer to looking like it's setting and then look at that, you can see the atmosphere. This is basically simulating sunlight going through the atmosphere. I love it. Right. and then on the other side. So that's a really cool feature uh, about this program. And you'll notice uh, bodies in the solar system that don't have atmospheres, it won't do this. For example, Mars has two moons, Phobos and Deimos. All right. Let's look at it from the top view. And if we go zoom in on Deimos the same way as we did before, click once and then click again to zoom, you'll see uh, let's get the sun in, in the view here. No atmosphere. Look at that. It's just, it's just uh, 
space and then rock space and then rock and so um, you can also probably tell that this is a small object because it's not round um, we're gonna learn that gravity is what causes material and space to clump together and if you have enough material the gravitational force is strong enough to make a nice round object usually most likely because early in their life times these planets were really hot and mostly molten and hadn't really cooled on the outside yet and so they were kind of liquidy and could do that um, but the gravitational attraction of all the material in this little body was not strong enough to make it completely round this is what this is typically what an asteroid will look like so it's thought that um, Deimos and Phobos over here let's go to Phobos it's thought that they were captured asteroids they get their own little craters. They've been hit before, and that's actually how they get bigger. Is you get, you know, collisions, and things will stick together, kind of like when you make a snowman in a sense. You know, you run a snowball into other snow, pack it together, and it makes a bigger one, right? So, yeah. So this is uh, this is really cool. Right now, I'm focused on Phobos. So if I zoom out, Phobos is going to zoom out. We can go back to Mars by going in destination and selecting the uh, object we want. We want Mars, so we'll go to Planets and Moons and Mars and Go. And it didn't look like it changed that much, but now you can see if we zoom out, we're zooming out of Mars. Get a nice little distant view of Mars. Pretend we're in a spaceship flying away. Ah, beautiful. This is such a cool program to be able to see, see it in 3D like this. You can still see the atmosphere when the sun gets close. It's awesome. Alright, so that's Mars. Mars is, again, the fourth planet in the solar system. Let's zoom back out to the solar system view. So you go to destination, solar system, go. And we are now, although it doesn't look like it, we're now focused on the solar system. So when I click and drag, we're centered on the solar system. We just move all around the solar system, right? So you can see Mars is the fourth planet from the Sun. We got Mercury here, Venus, and then Earth, we're the third planet, and then Mars. So, and then between Mars and Jupiter you get a lot of asteroids, but again we'll get to that later. So that's eyes in the solar system. Let's uh, close this down. And the last thing I wanted to introduce you to in this video is uh, these couple of pictures here. And so let's uh, so you you see here two pictures. And you can probably guess which one is Earth and which is Mars because well you see a little guy there. If you can tell, I don't know if it's kind of hard to tell on my my screen when I rendered this, it might not be as clear. But um, this is the I believe it's pronounced the Atacama. Could be wrong about that. Atacama Desert in Chile, I think, and except for the blue sky and the less red rocks and dirt there's a lot more iron content in the uh, dirt here on Mars than there is in this particular area um, in on the earth but except for that it looks very similar doesn't it? You just got rocks and dirt kind of strewn around not really any plant life that you can see at this zoom level of the picture there might be little teeny plants if you were to zoom in um, but can't really tell that from here. Another thing which you actually can't tell in this picture is the horizon on Earth looks pretty far away. When you see mountains in the horizon, they seem these seem like they're miles away. I don't know, but when you see mountains on Mars, um, since Mars is smaller, the horizon is closer, and so it's really hard to judge just by looking at pictures how far away they are. Um, I think you'd actually have to to be on Mars for for an appreciable amount of time to get a, a good uh, understanding of the depth of the horizon. But it looks like the mountains are always a lot closer on Mars, which makes sense since the horizon is smaller. So, um, But most deserts on Earth, not all, but most, tend to be hot. And so people often think that when you're looking at Mars, it looks like a hot planet because it's, it looks like a typical desert on Earth. But in fact, uh, Mars is more similar to 
um, a different area on the Earth in terms of climate anyway. Let's just uh, do that, do that. Ant the Antarctic. Uh, this is on average the coldest place on Earth and temperatures in the Antarctic are you know on average similar to those on Mars. Maybe Mars is a bit colder. Um, some places on Mars would be uh, maybe warmer on average but maybe near the, the equator whereas in the poles in the northern and southern parts of the planet uh, they would definitely be colder than uh, here. And so uh, and then you see there's not really many rocks and stuff here. Maybe under the snow but um, so and they look a little different but if you were to train for um, living on Mars this might be where you, you'd want to do it. So so because of the similarities and you know the day length is very similar Mars day is just a tiny bit longer than ours and Mars does have seasons the tilt is pretty similar and um, you know a lot of similar minerals and materials on the planet and m most likely lots of water in different places Mars is often considered the second most hospitable planet next to ours in the solar system so all right, so this is the introductory video. Video we'll be uh, talking in more detail about lots of different aspects of Mars, and um, hope you're excited to learn about this planet. I'll see you next time.